I'm Evan, the education program leader for the National Music Center, coming at you today from Studio Bell, home of the National Music Center. Studio Bell is the building that the National Music Center operates out of. Anyway, this week I want to take a close look at instruments that make you go like this. The trumpet has long been one of the superstars of the musical world. Lots of solos in orchestral music. One of the first lead jazz instruments. The trumpet as we know it today with these valves is actually not that old. But humans have been playing with trumpet-like instruments for a long, long time. In fact, trumpets are among the candidates for oldest potential instruments because you can really build them out of objects you just find lying around. If you find a large seashell in the shape of a conch, and buzz into it, it transforms the sound. It basically becomes a trumpet. So perhaps the first trumpet was a conch shell, but it also could have been an animal's horn. Ram's horns also make lovely cones, as do the horns of cattle, and we kept a lot of these creatures around. And again, if you buzz into it, it makes a trumpet-like sound. Lastly, it could have been just a hollowed out stick. If you buzz into that, you get trumpet-like sounds, depending on the size of the stick. If it's like a large log, you get a didgeridoo. I don't want to leave you with the impression that humans were using ancient horns and sounding like Louis Armstrong. They didn't work that well. What they did give to humans was unparalleled volume. Louder sounds than any other human could make with the originally installed parts. Early horns were used more by messengers and armies. To get more than a couple of notes, you need a design more complicated than this. Let's look at the design of the trumpet by breaking it up into its individual parts. Now, what part of this instrument do you think creates the vibration? That's a little bit of a trick question because the vibration isn't created on this instrument. It is created from your lips. The sound that you make into a trumpet is actually like this. That's called buzzing. The way I learned to buzz is first you make a hmm sound. Hmm. Once you have that hmm shape, then you tighten your lips up and then blow air straight through that. Makes my inner ear itch a little. A mouthpiece is almost like a miniature trumpet in reverse. I have a cone up here and a tube right here. This cup catches the messy vibrations and channels them into this tube. So you make the buzzing sound. You don't push the mouthpiece against your lips very hard. Really, your lips just need to form a seal with this cup. So your first step is to practice just buzzing into a mouthpiece. You can change the pitch a little bit by tightening or loosening your lips. Now you can play with this hole, this opening. What I do is I take my index finger and just wrap it around the end there. So the hole of the mouthpiece is just sticking right there. Then I can form a cup with the rest of my hand. So just as our mouth and tongue can shape the sound of our voice into words, we can use our hand to shape the sound that comes out of the end of this. So we buzz into the mouthpiece, which channels the sound waves into this tube, and then the tube goes around for a while. Now we talked a lot about how cones and cylinders affect sound waves and overtones in our saxophone versus clarinet video. And the same thing applies here. We will find both cones and cylinders. First, a long cylinder. My cylinder doesn't even need to be made out of brass. I can just use a regular plastic tube. Attach that to my tube, and now the sound waves have to travel down this entire cylinder. That's quite a transformation. This tube does not care if it's going in a straight line or not. Unless it gets pinched off. If you're playing along at home and you've reached this stage, then there's a safety thing I want to address. Now something's about to happen. I'm about to damage my hearing. You do not know how loud the sound is coming out of this, and you don't want it right beside your ear. Also, don't put it next to your friend's ear. You could damage their hearing forever. Don't do this. Now, of course, this is not a cylinder the whole way. We have a giant cone. So I'm going to add a cone to this. Now, before I play this, what do you think the cone will do to change the sound? It's 
So I'd say the main difference, adding the cone, I do get a boost to my volume, but it also brings out some of the overtones, making the overall sound brighter. Really, the sound waves are going through a huge pressure change when they exit this tube, and the cone helps ease that transition. The trumpet is known as one of the brightest instruments in the orchestra. That means it has lots of overtones and they come through very strongly. Again, at this stage, I can play with the opening on a trumpet. I can change the shape of this hole by adding something called a mute. Mutes come in different shapes and sizes. This one is called a wheezy mute. You'll see this side is hollow and this side has a little hole. This makes the sound waves escape in a different way. These kinds of mutes were most famously used by Miles Davis. I can also use my hand. The first valves were added to trumpets by Heinrich Stortzel in the 18-teens. The modern design was invented by Francois Perenet in 1838. By the mid-1800s, most brass instruments had adopted some kind of valve. Before that, the trumpet could not hit every note. And to get a lot of the notes of the scale, you had to play in a very high register. These valves have different holes in them, which send the air down different channels. So when I press this down, it lengthens my overall pipe by this much. And this one only lengthens my pipe by this much. So actually, this drops the pitch by a semitone. This drops it by a whole tone. And this by a tone and a half. And then you can put them together in combination. Trumpets before valves, they could add little things called crooks, which would extend the length of the pipe and change the overall key. So as a human, I hope you will at one point take up this ancient tradition of going into the end of a cone. It really does make you feel powerful to create louder noises than any other creature on the planet. I'll leave a list of materials for the tube trumpet. You can buy plastic mouthpieces online for pretty cheap these days. And you could have your very own plastic natural trumpet. I'll also link to the spectrogram we used today. So don't ever let anyone make you feel bad about tooting your horn. And until next time, happy exploring. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and or subscribe. Also, the National Music Center is a charity that relies on donations. So if you have the means and feel like it, please go to studiobell.ca slash donate.